You probably know that saving seed from your own plants is a great way to save money. But when it comes to saving tomato seeds, you can save a small fortune. Join me today as I show you how to collect and save tomato seeds. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and I love growing tomatoes, and I grow all types of new tomatoes every year. And when I come across a variety that I really like, I want to save the seeds so that I can continue planting those tomatoes. Over the years, I've bought a lot of seed packets, and it seems on average that I'm paying about $4 for half a gram of seeds. That works out to over $200 for just an ounce of tomato seeds. And it doesn't take a lot to reach that point. So by saving my own tomato seeds, like these black creme, over the course of a gardening lifetime, I can save hundreds of dollars. You want the fruit of the tomato to be completely ripe, fully mature when it comes to saving seeds. And it's easy with the tomato because you can pull the fruit from the vine. And when it offers no resistance, has the full color that you're looking for and is slightly soft, it's ideal for saving seed, which coincides pretty closely to the time that we're harvesting it to eat. I have a number of different types of tomatoes growing along this bed. I've got sun gold, sun sugar, sun peach, and black crim, but it's only the black crim that I can save the seeds from and expect to get the same plant. All those other sun tomatoes are hybrids. And if I save those seeds, grow a plant, and then put that plant in the garden next year, well, there's no guarantee what the fruit will turn out to be. It definitely won't be a sun sugar, sun gold, or sun peach, but an open pollinated variety, an heirloom like this black crim, well, I can save the seed, start plants, put it in the ground, and get the exact fruit I'm looking for next year. The process is pretty basic. There's a few steps, and it's not hard, but let's go inside, and I'll show you how I save these seeds. There are a few different ways that you can now collect and save the tomato seeds, and I'll show you those different methods as we proceed. The one that you'll see recommended most often, and the one that I think is best is to ferment the tomato seed. Now, most wet seeds, those are the seeds that are inside a fruit, have a natural germination inhibitor. Otherwise, that moist, wet environment would cause all those seeds to sprout inside the fruit. And so that's the case with tomatoes as well. That little gel sac that's around the tomato seed inhibits germination and it helps for us to get rid of that inhibitor to save the seeds and help ensure that we have germination in the future. And so now I'm going to remove the seeds from the tomato and I'll be putting them into this glass jar. It helps as you look at the tomato to slice it vertically. Here's the top, here's the bottom. One of the main reasons we do that is because the seeds will actually be growing from bottom to top. And so it makes it easier for us to remove these seeds by cutting it that way. And you can cut it in half, you can cut it in quarters. I'll typically cut it in eighths for easy seed removal. And now we'll simply take the seeds and drop them into the jar. You could easily do this with your finger. And on each side of the cut we made, you'll see the seeds in the tomato and they'll reach all the way up to the top. And so we just scoop them into the jar. If you pull aside the meat of the tomato, you might be able to just run your finger all the way along the skin and drop the seeds into the jar. A spoon also works well to do this. Just scooping out the seeds, 
trying to get as many as you can and don't worry if some of the pulp or some of the meat of the tomato drops into the jar at this point the fermentation process will take care of all of that and so we'll just continue with this tomato separating the seeds from the flesh until we have as many of them as we need there are always some seeds left behind and I'll just scoop those up with a knife and drop them into the jar as well and you can see all the little gel around the tomato it actually makes the seeds look green but as you'll see after we complete this process the seeds themselves are a light brown if you have a really juicy tomato like this one you can stop here but I like to add a little bit of water about half an inch to an inch to cover the seeds and then we'll set this aside to start fermenting collecting the seeds does not make the tomato inedible you can still eat all these pieces now the ones I'm harvesting from are overripe and it's pretty mushy so I'm gonna put this in the compost pile but through the course of the season go ahead and harvest some ripe fruit that you're planning to eat and just collect the seeds before you serve those tomatoes in a salad or on a relish tray after two or three days you'll notice mold or scum forming on the surface and this is the indication that the fermentation is happening and you can start thinking about harvesting these seeds and so now I'll get rid of all of this mold and scum and collect just the seeds so I'll let water run into the jar and all of that scum and tomato waste is going to rise to the top so I'll spoon off the scum and just pour out as much of the tomato pieces as I can and you can see that all of this pours off pretty nicely because all of the viable tomato seeds will sink to the bottom and be left behind so I'll just add some more water let the seeds settle for a minute and then pour off all of the material that I don't need as I save the seeds and so with most of that waste gone and the good seeds settling to the bottom now I'll go ahead and pour the whole thing into a mesh strainer give the seeds a good rinse and they're ready to start drying at this point I'll take a piece of parchment paper that I've labeled with the type of tomato and then just dump the seeds out then I'll spread apart the seeds as much as I can they're pretty wet and they'll clump together but I want to try to expose air as much as possible to all these individual seeds after a day and especially two it's easy to break apart these clumps into individual seeds and after about five days of drying they'll be nice and light brown and ready for saving another option for collecting the seeds that I'll show you with these little cherry tomatoes these lemon drops is to go ahead and just squeeze the seeds onto a paper towel what we're going to do by putting them on a paper towel is to try to rub off the gel sack as much as possible 
it achieves the same basic results. I don't think it's quite as effective as removing all the gel as the fermentation method, but it's definitely an option and one that happens much faster. You don't have to wait three or four days for fermentation. And so now with the seeds on these paper towels, I'll just take another paper towel and rub them together. And so by rubbing these paper towels back and forth, we're rubbing off the gel coating from the seeds. The gel is left behind on the paper towel, and now I'll just rub all of these seeds onto my prepared parchment paper. These seeds want to stay stuck to the paper towel, so I'll use a knife just to scrape them onto the parchment paper. You can leave them on the paper towel to dry, but they tend to stick more than they do on the parchment paper. And so I'll just scrape all these off and give them a few days to dry. Another option is just to take the pulp with the seeds and put it directly on paper towels or a paper plate or parchment paper to dry. And then over a period of days when it's dried, then you can separate into individual seeds. Any of those methods should give you viable seed. Though anecdotally, I find that the fermentation method gives me better germination rates. And research has shown that when you ferment the seeds, you actually can reduce the likelihood of many tomato diseases. So that's why it's so often recommended, and that's why I think it's best. It doesn't take that long. It leaves you with a clean seed that is ready to save, and it reduces the risk of tomato disease. And then you just take a container. I like to save in glass jars. And I have these little glass jars. I have these seeds that are completely dried. They've been sitting here for about five or six days. And now I'm going to just pour the seeds into my jar. And the jar is labeled with the variety of the seed and the year that I'm saving the seed. And now I'm done. I can set this aside and these seeds will be ready to start in early spring for next year's garden. Now you can expect that tomato seeds should last at least three years in storage in a dark, dry, cool location. I've had seeds that have been five or six years old that I've saved and they've germinated just fine. And I've read that 10 and 15 years is not unusual for saved tomato seeds. So you only need to do this every couple years and you'll have as many seeds as you need for years to come. I'll let the rest of these seeds dry out and then I'll add them to my collection of seeds that I've saved this year. I'm Gardner Scott. Enjoy gardening.